a couple of tough games, you know, early on in the yeah. conference for you yeah, guys. Yeah, at, 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 at Fordham's going to be hard. Early. Yeah, at Fordham's going to be very hard. They're very well coached. Um, you know, in terms of road games, we have to go to Creighton early on, and, and that's going to be a really hard game. Um, and then, you know, in the NIT, we're going to go on the road in the second or third game if we can win. So those are going to be all hard games. And obviously our home schedule is, is, is elite. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to do that because I wanted to give us that opportunity to have an at-large bid. And if we lose them, then you know what? We'll get better. It'll only help us for the league. If we win them, then we're going to put ourselves in a good position. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Coach, you just, you just answered this, but yeah, no I have problem. to mention to it again. Yeah, absolutely. Is that last year at this time, in the media day, you were pleased by the fact that they, they, the team was buying into your system. And it just seemed to me, as the season went on, it wasn't just the team buying it, but the whole atmosphere. The, absolutely. Everybody the fans. On the campus, absolutely. The, fans, they, the, the marketing, everything about your program and the support system seems like everything was buying into what you were trying to do. They were, and I give the administration a tremendous amount of credit because they started from the day one to support me. Um, and, and But I supported them. And it's a marriage, Juan. It's not just about, you know, what can they do for me? What can they do? What can I do for them? You know what? Our kids needed to go to the volleyball games, needed to go to the softball games, needed to go to the baseball games. Our baseball team is ranked top 30 team in the country. You know, our volleyball team is now in first place in the Big East. We need to support those teams. And so it's a marriage thing. And, and, and they saw how much we cared about them, uh, these other teams, and that helped our marketing department because Kelly O'Neill does a great job, but we've got to help her as well. You know, we expect to sell out for our first game of the year this year. Preseason WNIT game, it's our anti bullying event. I'm very passionate about it, especially with everything that's happened in New Jersey with Sayreville High and stuff. We need to protect every kid as possible. And you know what? We're going to give a great, great day for those kids to learn about, you know, stepping up, being taken care of. It's not, it's not okay to be bullied. It's okay to say something. We're here to protect them as our players will. And we're going to go into all these schools that are coming to our first game, and our players will go into those classrooms and speak to them and teach them about it all throughout the year. So it's something I'm very passionate about. And I tell you, our fans have jumped on the bandwagon, even with Deja. You know, Deja went through a lot of social media help. I mean, it was free Deja Simmons, which became a very popular hashtag. That was all our alumni. Our men's basketball team all jumped on the, on the, on the bandwagon and started tweeting stuff like that. I mean, what more could we ask from the fans and from our support staff than that? And it looks like now it's a, almost like a continuation. The buying in was happening on campus, but as you see now, the buying in is happening outside the campus. So you're Absolutely. looking at the representation. Even though they picked you as fifth, yeah. it's just, I haven't seen a, a women's Seton Hall team picked higher than seventh place in years. <laughs> no, and it's a, a credit to our kids. And, you know, a lot of people say it doesn't matter where you picked. Well, it mattered to us to not be picked last anymore because, you know what, our kids need to be recognized that they're good basketball players. And, you know what, we're going to give a great product. We're going to play an exciting style. And, um, you know what, we're not even satisfied. If we finish fifth, we're going to feel it's a failure as opposed to, no offense, other years if they finish fifth, it would have been the greatest thing in the world. To us, if we don't finish first, we're going to be upset. And that's, you know what, very difficult with DePaul, St. John's, Creighton, Villanova, Providence, um, you, know, you know, Butler, you know, Marquette. We have great teams in our league. Xavier, obviously. Georgetown's got a new coach, and they have some good players. So we're going to have to do a good job if, uh, of playing our game. But if we do one, we're going to be right there at the end. Because I got to tell you, we got good talent. There's no question. After the DePaul game on campus, you said it three times in the post uh, about the situation about they had more guns than, yeah. than you did. Yeah. And, and it just came to the fact whether you ran out of we're out of steam, yep, and it's not, that will never be the answer this year. We can go, you know, anyone down the bench, and I have confidence to put that kid in the game. There's no doubt whether that kid's played the game before or not. We will not never go into this battle without a full ammunition. And that was my goal when I took this program over, to upgrade the talent level, yes, at the top, but upgrade it at the bottom as well, and that was clearly done very quickly. So you're really satisfied that you can play your type of game now Absolutely. with more of the guns that you have? Absolutely. We shoot the ball well, we'll spread the floor, we're going to attack, and we're going to play the way we can. And if someone's not having a good game that day or in foul trouble or sick or just whatever it may be, we have other people to go in for them, and there won't be a big drop-off. I, that I know for a fact. I watch practice every day, and they're competitive practices. They really are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan.
Coach, uh, I know you may have reflected on this before, but can you talk more about the uh, WNIT tournament and what it means for you and the team to be able to uh, participate in that? The, to be selected to play in the preseason WNIT was a real honor because, you know what, it's a great organization, a great tournament with top teams, and then to be able to host a game, that meant so much. That means, you know, the people at WNIT and people nationally said, you know what, Seton Hall has a good program, and secondly, has a great fan base that's going to come out and support that game because that's what it's about early in the year. And we moved it to a 12 o'clock tip-off, which is going to be an anti-bullying day, which is going to really resonate with all our fans and their families, and we invite everyone out. It's going to be a great day. We expect a sellout crowd, and that's what we want, and that's what we're striving for. As a coach, how special is it for you to have a program that is able to get back to the community and be able to stand up for things like anti-bullying? It's very important to me, and I said that when I took the job in one of my first things. This team wasn't just going to go to a school, read a book, and go home. We're going to go there for a reason and with a meaning. And you know what? We're going to save someone's life, and we're going to save hopefully a lot of people and make their lives a lot better. Because you know what? Anti-bullying is, is a huge passion of mine, and I'm very compassionate about it, and I want people to be able to you know, live a life free of worrying about anything. Because you know what? I have two children, and, 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 and all our kids are my children at Seton Hall, and I want them to always feel safe. And we're going to go into the community and make a big difference, that's for sure. Thank you, sir.